Good evening. I'm Mark Gooding, ZL2 UFI in Upper Hutt. And I'm Debbie Morgan, ZL2DL in Upper Hutt. And I'm Stephen McNeil, ZL4HG from Christchurch. And I'm Jim Meacham, ZL2BHF in Nelson. And together we bring you the NZART official broadcast for October 2021. Good evening everyone. Leading the NZART official broadcast tonight is presidential comment. From Upper Hutt, here's our NZART president, Mark Gooding, ZL2UFI. Mark? Kia ora and Pamari everyone. As we come towards the end of the year, with COVID's Delta version trying hard to stop us having a Christmas this year, just a reminder, get the jab if you haven't already. Recently, some members experienced an extended delivery delay with the latest issue of break-in, with many complaining about the poor delivery service. The issue was with New Zealand Post, who was expecting large volumes of letters and parcels, much like Christmas, so there was nothing we as an organisation can do. The magazine was lodged on time, so just be patient, everyone. The next issue of break-in, along with call book, will be out about the second week of December, all going well. So again, as it will be December, I guess there may be some delay, but New Zealand Post may well have recruited the thousand-odd people they need to help out. Also, following the council meeting next week, an announcement will be made about the editorial positions in relation to break-in. Details of this will be on the NZRT website and other media once decisions are made. Just on the news that is released by NZRT, your first point of call should always be one of the official forms of communications. They are the NZART website, the NZART Facebook page, HQ Info Line, the official broadcast, and finally, Breakin. The most up-to-date ones are the NZART website and the NZART Facebook page. The others are time-affected in their delivery methods, so normally they are too late for instant news releases. I'm sure Debbie will be reminding you all to renew your subscriptions for next year and that the rebate expires on 30 November 2021. Conference 2022 in Wellington has confirmed the dates and location. Again, details are displayed on the NZART website with a blue banner which will link off to the conference website. Additional information will be added to the conference website over time with organisers meeting in November to begin the full planning process now that we are good to go. If planning to attend, get in early for flights as they are as low as possible now. A call will soon go out for those who wish to run their AGMs on the Sunday as well as a call for members able to run a forum on the Sunday. We can run up to four forum streams at once, so people need to come forward to run them. A contact link for email is available off the conference website should you wish to offer to run a forum. I see it's time to start looking forward to various contests and other activities as we go into summer and the Christmas break. With VHF Field Day on Saturday 4th and 5th of December, straight key night on Sunday 5th of December, and H night on Wednesday the 8th of December, and NZAT Portable Activity Day on 1 January 2022. There's something for everyone. All of the information on these events are on the NZAT website and listed on the calendar of events on the main page. Enjoy these events of taking part and remember to submit a log to the manager so it can be scored. I've been pointed out that it's less than 60 days to Christmas the other day, so get that all into Santa if you haven't already. Well, that's all for me, Jim, and back to you. Thank you, Mark. The president of NZART, Mark Gooding, ZL2UFI. The Manawatu Amateur Radio Society Branch 20 advise that due to COVID restrictions and the lack of bookings, their table sale planned for the 6th of November is cancelled. Instead, they'll hold a car boot sale at the ZL2KO Club Rooms on the same date. Full details in the branch news later in tonight's broadcast. Now for the latest from NZART headquarters, we travel back to Upper Hutt and join NZART's business manager, Debbie Morgan, ZL2DL, for her monthly update. Kia ora, Jim, and Pomaria, everyone. Not a great deal of news from me this month, Jim, but one very important and urgent announcement. Last week, I posted out subscription renewal statements. As often happens with all the best of intentions, the credit card boxes at the bottom of the statement are incomplete. You now need to include the three-digit number on the reverse of your credit card as these boxes have been missed off the form. If you are opting to pay by credit card and returning the form to me, 
please include this three-digit number, or CBB, as banks call it, as I cannot process your card payment without it. And finally, in regard to payment by credit card, if you are intending to claim the prompt payment discount, please, please cross off the invoice total on the remittance slip and state the amount payable. I will deduct the value that is advised. If not, then the total amount payable will be debited from your card. Changing topics now, as we are fast approaching the year end, it's time to be considering remits that branches wish to place at next year's AGM. An individual may also submit a remit so long as there is a minimum of five signatories from current members of NZART in support of it. All remits need to reach headquarters by the 31st of December 2021. However, the office will be closed from Friday the 24th of December and reopen Monday the 10th of January. Therefore, please send via email where possible. Well, that's it from me this month, Jim. Please stay safe, everyone. Thank you, Debbie. Debbie Morgan, ZL2DL, the NZART Business Manager. For an update now on amateur radio news from around the world, we join the team at the Amateur Radio News Line. Drilling for disaster is part of what amateur radio is all about. Hams and other emergency responders around the world shared the scenario of a simulated earthquake recently, and Jim Meachin, ZL2BHF, tells us how it all played out. Amateur radio once again played a key role in the worldwide earthquake drill known as the Great Shakeout. Most of the drills were held on Thursday, October 21st, with the majority of them happening on the West Coast, the East Coast, and in the Southeast region of the United States. The drill also took place in Japan, New Zealand, the Caribbean, and many of the Canadian provinces. According to the Great Shakeout website, 31.4 million people participated and more than 3,400 of them were involved as volunteers with radio organizations such as the Amateur Radio Emergency Service in the U.S. The drills are held around the world traditionally on the third Thursday of October and help train people in earthquake-prone regions to help ensure public safety at home, in schools or in the workplace. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Jim Meachin, ZL2BHF. If you're a fan of classic old tube amplifiers and like to spend time talking about them as much as you enjoy using them, there's an online forum made just for you. Kevin Trotman, N5PRE, tells us how to make that connection. Matt Breton, N8TW, and Alan McNabb, the second, W0ARM, share a love of the classics. In this case, the classic old Henry radio tube amplifiers. The amps add power, of course, but there's also a warm glow, partly because of the amps' treasured history that dates back to the company's roots in 1927. Matt and Alan are co-owners of a Groups.io forum devoted to these beloved workhorses of the shack. Although the Henry Company is still in business, the advent of solid-state amp has made owners of the old-time models such as the classic 3K Classic and 3KA treasure them even more. Allen told Newsline that the group's I.O. forum provides fans and owners of Henry Amps an opportunity to share stories, tips, and admiration for what Allen calls the amp with the big and beefy power supply. Allen himself owns a 3K Classic and a 3KA and expects to add a 2K Classic desktop to his growing collection soon. He told Newsline that he and Matt hope to, quote, keep the Henry legacy alive for another generation of hams, end quote. In their day, he said Henry Amps were definitely the Cadillacs of amplifiers. Amps are invited to share their enthusiasm with other Henry users by visiting the link that appears in the text version of this week's newscast. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Kevin Trotman, N5PRE. In Western Australia, all eyes are on the state's first homemade CubeSat. John Williams, VK4JJW, tells us what happens next. Students at Curtin University in Western Australia proudly watched as their homemade satellite BNAR-1 was sent into low Earth orbit from the ISS in early October. Now the CubeSat has other work to do. Ben Hartig, BNAR's program manager, said that the amateur radio community is expected to make use of the satellite on the UHF frequencies between 430 and 440 megahertz. 
Students will also be listening and decoding signals the satellite's sending to determine the satellite's location and performance. The satellite, which has two cameras on board, is circling Earth once every hour and a half at a distance of 400 kilometres or nearly 250 miles above the Earth. Phil Bland, director of the university's Space Science and Technology Centre, said that as Western Australia's first homegrown spacecraft, BNI-1 has a key role in the centre's space program, which includes getting six more satellites launched during the next 18 months. A statement on the BNAR Space website declares its mission. It says, and I quote, As Western Australia's first spacecraft, this marks the start of our state's journey into space. The use of amateur frequencies on this satellite forms the backbone of an exciting opportunity to engage the community and STEM students. Our outreach program aims to inspire bold projects in space exploration, end quote. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm John Williams, VK4JJW. In the world of DX, listen for the special event call sign Charlie November 46 Mike Sierra until November 10th from Morocco. Hams will be marking the 46th anniversary of the Green March for the annexation of the Spanish Sahara called for by King Hassan II. Send QSL cards to Charlie November 8, Whiskey Whiskey. Members of the Belgian Air Force Amateur Radio Association are operating three special event stations until the end of 2021. The call signs are Oscar November 75 Alpha Foxtrot, Oscar November 75 Bravo Alpha Foxtrot and Oscar November 75 Bravo Foxtrot Sierra. The activations are in celebration of the 75th anniversary of the Belgian Air Force. Be listening on various HF bands and send QSLs to Oscar November 6, Kilo Lima. Listen for Richard, November, November 2 Tango, and other operators using the call sign Charlie 6 Alpha Hotel Bravo until November 22nd from Bimini. Send QSLs via Logbook of the World or Club Logs OQRS. And be listening for Jamie, Mike Zero, Sierra Delta Victor, using the call sign 3 Bravo 8 Stroke, Kilo X-Ray 7 Mike, from Mauritius between November 22nd and December 1st. Jamie will be part of the 3 Bravo 8 Mike team and will be operating on various HF bands, QSL via Logbook of the World or Club Logs OQRS. For now, with Karen Eve Murray, KD2GUT at the News Desk in New York, and our news team worldwide, I'm Don Wellbanks, AE5DW in Picayune, Mississippi, saying 7-3. And as always, we thank you for listening. Amateur Radio Newsline is copyright 2021. All rights are reserved. And as always, we say thank you to Newsline for the use of their copyright material. Finally, in tonight's official broadcast lineup, it's Branch News. Here's Stephen McNeil, ZL4HG. Thanks, Jim, and good evening, everyone. Well, once again, COVID has been disrupting many of the best laid plans that clubs have had in place. Zoom and other video systems are being used extensively, and if you haven't tried them, have a go, as it's a way to keep in touch. And remember, all the activities we mention here tonight are subject to change, so check with the local branch for updates. So we start with the Western Suburbs Radio Club, Branch 03 in ZART, who have a meeting planned for Saturday the 27th of November, starting 10am. This will feature John ZL1NE with an introduction to Google Earth, and that is, of course, subject to lockdown rules. And the meeting is at the club rooms at 3000 Great North Road in Newlyn. The Hawke's Bay Amateur Radio Club, NZART Branch 13, has its annual general meeting and homebrew competition at Pekawai Hall in Pekawai on Wednesday the 24th of November, starting from 7.30pm. Back to the Central North Island and the Manor 2 Radio Society, NZART Branch 20, has had to change its table sale due to COVID. Instead of a table sale, they'll now be running a car boot sale at the ZL2KO Club Rooms, which is at 65 Totara Road in Palmerston North. Now, the date is Saturday the 6th of November, and doors open for sellers at 9.30am and to the general public at 10am. An outdoor barbecue will be available for morning tea, and for further details, contact Ryan Warner ZL1RKW or Peter Moore ZL2AUB by email at tablesale at zl2ko.org.nz and that email again is tablesale at zl2ko.org.nz Hutt Valley Branch 18 in ZART has a movie night for their next meeting on Monday the 1st of November starting 7.30pm 
However, this will be a movie night with a difference, as it will be via Zoom, featuring Dr. Susie Wiles talking about COVID-19. The presentation is about an hour long, and you'll need to look at the branch newsletter to get the Zoom meeting information. And to Christchurch Branch 05, where the next meeting will be on Wednesday the 3rd of November at the Club Rooms, which is at 5 Idris Road in Fendleton, starting 7.30pm. Richard ZL4FZ will be showing us the correct fitment of RF connectors to various types of coax. Well, that's all from me. Back to you, Jim. Thank you, Stephen. Stephen McNeil, ZL4HG, reporting from Christchurch. The next official broadcast of NZART will be made by ZL6A at 8pm on Sunday the 28th of November. This is ZL6A, headquarters station of the New Zealand Association of Radio Transmitters, concluding the official broadcast for October 2021. Good night everyone. Good night now.